A semiconductor diode will consist of both P-type and N-type semiconductor materials which are joined together. Here we see the schematic symbol of a general purpose diode. As you may have noticed, the P material forms the anode and the M material forms the cathode. Where the two materials are joined is called the PN junction. When the PN junction is formed, some of the donor electrons will drift across the junction into the P material, leaving positive ions in the N material. As the electrons drift into the P material, it creates a negative potential which repels any further drifting of the free electrons. The positive ions in the N material create a positive potential which will repel any drifting of the holes into the N material. This small area where the drifting of the electrons and holes have occurred will form a new area within the semiconductor material. This area is termed the depletion region. The depletion region will have an equal number of positive ions on one side and negative ions on the other side. The depletion region forms a barrier which must be overcome before current can flow through the semiconductor device. For silicon type semiconductor devices, this barrier requires a voltage of 7 tenths of 1 volt before current can flow. And for germanium type semiconductor devices, this barrier requires a voltage of 3 tenths of 1 volt. It is this depletion region which makes it possible to control the semiconductor device. Semiconductor materials have majority and minority charge carriers. The majority charge carrier in the P-type material is the hole, while the minority charge carrier is the electron. The majority charge carrier in the N-type material is the electron, and the minority charge carrier is the hole. When any semiconductor device is used in a circuit, it will have a wide range of voltages being applied to it. These voltages are referred to as bias voltages. The bias voltage will determine how the device will react in the circuit. When a negative bias voltage is applied to the P side of the semiconductor and a positive bias is applied to the N side of the device, it causes the majority charge carriers to move away from the PN junction. This in turn causes the depletion region within the device to widen. When the depletion region widens sufficiently, it will cause the majority charge carriers to stop flowing. This is referred to as a reverse bias condition. As you will learn later in this program, there are certain semiconductor devices that are designed to operate in the reverse bias mode. Within any semiconductor device, there will be a reverse current flow made up of minority charge carriers. As you learned earlier, the minority charge carrier in the P material is the electron, and the minority charge carrier in the N material is the hole. This reverse current is usually very small. It is typically about one microampere for silicon type devices, and approximately 10 microampere for the germanium type devices. These values are based on a room temperature condition of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. There is, however, a limit to the amount of reverse current which may be applied to the PN junction. This limit is termed the reverse breakdown voltage. This voltage may range from a few volts to several thousand volts. When the reverse breakdown voltage is reached, the reverse current will increase at a rapid rate which usually results in the device being destroyed. When a positive bias is applied to the P material and a negative bias is applied to the N material of the semiconductor device, it causes the majority charge carriers to flow toward the PN junction. This is referred to as a forward biased PN junction. If enough bias voltage is applied to the device, it will cause the depletion region to disappear and allow current to flow through the device. The negative bias on the N material will attract the holes in the P material and at the same time repel the electrons toward the PN junction. In the same respect, the positive bias on the P material will repel the holes toward the PN junction and attract the free electrons toward the positive bias. As the temperature is increased in a semiconductor material, both the electrons and holes will flow more easily through the material. This is due to the thermal agitation of the atoms, which increases the conductivity of the material. As the temperature increases, so will the forward and reverse current flow through the PN junction. Germanium devices are more sensitive to temperature changes than our silicon devices. 
The reverse current for both devices will be about double for every 10 degrees Fahrenheit increase in temperature. Since the current flows through a semiconductor increases as the temperature increases, it is said to have a negative temperature coefficient. The negative temperature coefficient will usually have a destructive effect on the semiconductor device. As the semiconductor passes current, it generates heat due to the electrons colliding with one another during the normal current flow. The greater the current flow, the more the electrons are agitated. This in turn creates more heat, which causes the device to further increase the conductivity of the material. This will continue until the maximum forward or reverse current rating is exceeded. When the maximum current rating is exceeded, it usually destroys the device. This phenomenon is referred to as thermal runaway. Transistors are more susceptible to this effect than our diodes. Now that you have an understanding of how the PN junction works, we will examine some of the more common special purpose diodes which you will encounter as a technician. You have already seen that when an ordinary general purpose diode is reverse biased, it will have a very small reverse current flow which is made up of minority charge carriers. If this reverse bias voltage is increased sufficiently, the PN junction will break down and a large reverse current will flow. This usually destroys the device. However, there is a special purpose diode that is designed to operate in the reverse bias mode. This diode is referred to as a Zener diode. The Zener diode is designed to operate at a specific breakdown voltage when reverse biased. This breakdown voltage is called the Zener breakdown or avalanche breakdown voltage. When the reverse bias voltage of the Zener is reached, the diode will break down and a very heavy reverse current will flow through the device. If this reverse current flow is not restricted by a resistor or some similar device, the Zener would be destroyed by the excessive current. Therefore, when Zener diodes are operated in the reverse bias mode, there must be a current limiting device in series with the Zener to keep it from self-destructing. The current limiting device is usually a resistor. The value of the resistor is chosen so that the Zener will operate between its threshold current and the maximum Zener current. Once the Zener avalanche is on, the voltage drop across the Zener will not change. Even if more current is passed through the device, this makes the Zener diode an excellent voltage regulating device. When the reverse bias is reduced below the avalanche voltage, the current will return to its off state condition. When the Zener is forward biased, it acts as an ordinary diode. Therefore, the Zener is usually operated in its reverse bias mode. The next semiconductor device we shall examine is the tunnel diode. The semiconductor material in the tunnel diode is doped extremely heavily with impurities. This gives the tunnel diode a very narrow depletion region. As seen on this graph, the tunnel diode has a very fast response to input voltages. These devices are used almost exclusively in high frequency circuits. Tunnel diodes may be used as amplifiers, oscillators, or as switching devices. Because of the fast response time of the tunnel diode, it requires a smaller bias voltage and a lower load resistance than do most other semiconductor devices. Tunnel diodes are designed to operate in the frequency range of 300 to 400 megahertz. The tunnel diode has a negative resistance region. In this region, the current is inversely proportional to the voltage. An increase in voltage will result in a decrease in current. Because the depletion region in the tunnel diode is very narrow, it does not constitute much of a barrier to the electron flow. A small forward bias will cause the majority charge carriers to cross the depletion region. When this occurs, the majority charge carriers are said to be tunneling through the barrier. When the tunnel diode is reverse biased, the majority charge carriers will tunnel through the barrier despite the fact that the junction is reverse biased and a substantial current will flow. The reverse characteristics of the tunnel diode is linear, like that of a resistor. When the tunnel diode is forward biased, its initial behavior is similar to its reverse bias condition. As you can see from this characteristic curve, 
When the forward bias is increased, more and more electrons will tunnel through the barrier, thus increasing the current. This occurs until a maximum level of tunneling is reached. As the forward bias is further increased, the tunneling effect will begin to decrease. When the forward bias is increased sufficiently, the tunnel diode characteristics will become similar to that of an ordinary diode. The tunnel diode is generally operated in its negative resistance region between the peak current and the valley current. The negative resistance region is its most important property. Here we see the Shockley diode. It is constructed of four layers of semiconductor material. This device is commonly used in relaxation oscillator circuits and in triggering circuits for silicon controlled rectifiers. The Shockley diode is basically a low current SCR without a gate. You will learn about the SCR later in this program. The Shockley diode is turned on when the anode to cathode voltage is increased to the forward switching voltage. The minimum current at which the Shockley diode will stay on is referred to as the hold current. When the current drops below this level, the diode will no longer conduct. Since the Shockley diode is a four-layer device, it will have three PN junctions. Two of the junctions will be forward biased and the third will be reverse biased. When the diode is forward biased, junctions one and three will become forward biased and junction two will become reverse biased. The reverse bias on the second junction will limit the current flow to minority charge carriers. Once the diode's forward bias voltage is increased to the reverse breakdown voltage of the second junction, the diode will turn on. When the diode turns on, its resistance will drop from several thousand ohms to a few hundred ohms. Here we see the Shockley diode being used in an oscillator circuit. When the circuit is energized, capacitor C1 will charge from the supply until the capacitor voltage reaches the diode's switching voltage. The diode then turns on and conducts a current flow which discharges capacitor C1. When the voltage on the capacitor falls below the level required to keep the diode on, the diode will turn off and allow the capacitor to charge back up. The output voltage will be a sawtooth waveform. Resistor R1 must be small enough to allow the diode switching current to flow when the diode switches on. Here we see the LED or light emitting diode. It is made from gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide, and gallium arsenide phosphide. The gallium phosphide will emit a red or green emission. The gallium arsenide will emit an infrared radiation, and the gallium arsenide phosphide will emit a red or yellow emission. When the electrons from the end material cross the junction of a forward biased LED, they combine with the holes in the P material. This carrier recombination of charge carriers causes the LED to radiate energy in the form of light. Since the PN material is encased in a transparent casing, the PN junction becomes the light source. The relatively large amounts of current consumed by the LED are their only major disadvantage. Apart from this, the LED does have the advantage of long life and ruggedness. Here we see the Varactor diode. The VVC diode is also referred to as a voltage variable capacitor, or Varicap for short. Basically, the Varactor diode is a reverse bias diode its capacitance is that of the PN junction depletion region. As you recall, a large reverse bias produces a wide depletion region. This depletion region will act as a dielectric between two conducting plates, which is the case would be the two semiconductor materials. Because of this characteristic, the Varactor diode has the ability to act as a voltage variable capacitor. The primary application of the Varactor diode is as a tuning device for oscillator circuits. When the diode is reverse biased, the depletion region will become depleted of majority charge carriers, which causes the depletion region to become a poor conductor. This depletion region then acts as a dielectric material. The width of the depletion region will be proportional to the applied voltage. Therefore, the capacitance of the Varactor diode will be inversely proportional to the applied voltage. Before examining more complex semiconductor devices, we will quickly review the material on the diodes just discussed. A semiconductor diode will contain both an N material and a P material. 
The area at which the two materials are joined is termed the PN junction. When the two types of semiconductor materials are bonded together, a depletion region is formed. The depletion region will have a deficiency of majority charge carriers. When the diode is forward biased, the majority charge carriers are pushed toward the PN junction, which in turn reduces the depletion region. When the diode is reverse biased, the majority charge carriers are pulled away from the PN junction, thereby increasing the size of the depletion region. The Zener diode is designed to operate in its reverse bias condition. The Zener must have some form of resistance in series between it and the power source, or the device could become destroyed. Tunnel diodes have a very narrow depletion region. This causes the device to have a very fast response to input signals. Tunnel diodes may be operated in either their reverse or forward bias conditions. The Shockley diode is a four-layer device that is commonly used in oscillator and triggering circuits. Light emitting diodes are made from gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide, or gallium arsenide phosphide. The recombination of the majority charge carriers causes the LED to give off energy in the form of light. The Varactor diode is used as a voltage variable capacitor. Varactors are normally operated in the reverse bias mode and its capacitance is that of the depletion region. This completes review number two. Next we shall examine some